Welcome. Welcome to Christmas Eve. I'm Bob Fuchs, the pastor here at Down River Church, and it is truly a joy to be in celebration with you this evening. Uh, I invite you to uh, take out your device, and even though we're not together in the same place, check in at the church, Down River Church, hashtag it, God is good, and because it's Christmas Eve, let's also hashtag a child is born. Later on in our service, uh, we'll be sharing a silent night together. And one of our traditions is to light a candle and raise that uh, during the singing of that song and raising it high during the last verse. So I invite you to, to get a candle and have that available later on in the service. We're going to experience and get to share the Christmas carols. We're going to hear scripture. You're going to hear a message from me. And we are going to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. Isaiah 9, verse 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you've shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. 
A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be a vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us. That we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was a long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and commitment. And Jesus our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. A Savior is born, indeed, joy to the world. Hi, my name is Bill. The Savior is born, as told by Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand did you know that your baby Baby boy, 
one day rule the nations. Did you know? Did you know that, that your baby, baby boy is heaven's perfect plan? And the sleeping child you're holding is the grave. Mary, did you know? Glory to God in the highest, as told by Luke, chapter 2, verse 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them. They were terrified. But... The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of da David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with, an with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on the pe and on earth peace to those whom in his favor rest. Glorifying and praising God as told by Luke chapter 2 verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread 
the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. There is indeed joy to the world. Now, for me, over the years, I loved attending the 11 o'clock Christmas Eve worship. Uh, when you left the building, usually it was after midnight, so it was Christmas Day. My heart was full. And if it was snowing, it would just overflow. Now, you see, Advent ended the preparation was over. The anticipation was over. God had once again entered the world. The Christ child had come. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, this year, Christmas Eve looks a little bit different for most of us. I mean, many of us are worshiping online. 
We're spending most of our times at home. And if we do go out, we mask up and we make sure we stay away from other people. It's not quite the season we would have expected at the beginning of the year. You see, the things we know and love, the way we celebrate, they're being done in different ways. We're doing them outside, we're doing them virtually or online. We're not getting that connection that we normally would. And in fact, we may be ready just to chuck it all, right? Just say, bah humbug, like Ebenezer Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. We may feel a bit grinchy and, you know, turn to how the Grinch stole Christmas and decide that Christmas 2020 just isn't coming. The Grinch won this time. I'd, I'd like to offer a different approach, a, a different idea. I'd like us to change our focus and try to step away from that as we step out of that darkness and into the light. Each Sunday in Advent and on Christmas Eve, we light the candles in the Advent wreath. And each time we add a little bit more light. We start out with one candle, and then in the end, all five are burning. Now, each of the candles carries a special meaning. And that meaning has not changed just because we're in a pandemic. And in fact, the meaning might even be more powerful and provide more light here in 2020. Hope, love, joy, and peace. Those are the four candles on the outside around the wreath. And the center candle that we lit for the first time this evening is the Christ candle. You see, God's light is present in the world today. Jesus, the Messiah, the greatest gift ever given. Christ brings to each of us the gifts that each candle represents. Hope. Hope is sent to each of us regardless of our circumstances. And right now as we live in the midst of COVID-19, many of us are filled with fear. And when fear enters, we may lose sight of hope. And that is not what Christ intended. Christ didn't intend for us to face an unknown future, although hasn't that always been the case for human beings? Our future is unknown. We don't know what tomorrow brings. And we've been told this over the years. In fact, there was a book written in the early 90s, Hope is Not a Strategy. And many politicians, business leaders, and a lot of different people actually follow that strategy and believe it. For us, though, as Christians, as we celebrate the coming of the Christ child, for hope is a strategy for us. Hope is where we have to go. You see, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. A little town of Bethlehem tells us that even though we have fears, the hope of Christ meets those. In fact, overcomes those. Jesus takes those fears away from us and gives us hope. Spread that amazing news. Love. Love is the second candle, and it's a love like no other. It's not a romantic love or love that we toss around when we say we love Christmas cookies or we love coffee. No, it's different than that. This is the love of God for all creation. Jesus came to show love to all the world, to all people. And I'm sure you've seen the signs at sporting events. Well, at, at least when we were allowed to attend sporting events, John 3.16, which tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone in, who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. You see, that's how much God loves us. And we're called to return that love. We're called to return that love to God and to others. Matthew 22 Verses 37 through 39 tells us this, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. 
Are we doing that, though? Are we doing that in our lives? Or are we holding back? Are we deciding that our love is going to be conditional? That we decide. When God came to earth in the form of Jesus Christ, love came to earth. Unconditional love. You see, no limits or requirements, and we're called to share that love with everyone. And if anything has been stopping us from doing that, perhaps this evening is the time to set that aside and show that pure love came and remains in the world today. Spread that amazing news. The third candle, the, the rose-colored candle, that represents joy. Now, joy is so much more than happiness. It's the joy that God came to earth and spread throughout the world. There is joy because a child is born. It's a joy that we know Jesus and his teachings. It's a joy for us to remember the birth of the Messiah. We can join with the angels and sing, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And you see, we know that Jesus brought joy, yet there are times of darkness. There are times where the joy can just get sucked right out of our lives. And this is nothing new. This has been the case since almost the beginning of time. When Jesus was with his disciples and he told them there would come a time where they wouldn't see him, they were concerned and they were confused. And they asked Jesus, what do you mean? And Jesus said to them in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 20, he said this, I assure you that you will cry and lament and the world will be happy. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. The same is true for us. After times of crying and grieving, because of Christ, our sorrow will, not might, our sorrow will turn to joy. Spread that amazing news. Peace is the fourth candle in the wreath. Jesus came and brought peace back to the world. Now, when we look around right now, we might have a difficult time believing that peace actually stuck around. We think of peace as quiet. It's tranquil. It's filled with harmony as the world is reconciled with each other, as the world is reconciled with God. Does that sound like today? Or any time in human history for that matter? I mean, instead of, of, of peace, we have noise, we have divisions, we have hostility, we have disorder. We even have war that continues to be raged. Yet Jesus not only brought peace, Jesus was peace. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 tells us this, A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. As we follow Jesus and live out his example, we are to share that peace with others. And we can start with our little corner of the world. We can start to change the way we approach it. We can live out peace. When we're involved in a disagreement, we can turn and think, how do we act in peace? Speak with peace in mind. Reach out to others in peace. The change may take time. It may take years. And yet we are still to do that. Keep working towards peace. Share that amazing news. Hope, love, joy, and peace all because God decided to come to earth and to live among us. Now tonight we lit the center candle, the Christ candle. And that light that came in the world, it, it has broken through the darkness. It is showing us the way. We're to follow that light. See, tomorrow and every day thereafter is Christmas Day. We celebrate the birth of the child, the birth of hope, the birth of love, the birth of joy and the birth of peace. Spread that amazing news.
to all. This prayer written by Robert Louis Stevenson. Loving God, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. And together on this Christmas Eve, we share the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I, in, I invite you to, to get your candle as together we bring a little bit more light into the world as we sing Silent Night.
The light has come into the world, breaking through the darkness. Christ the Savior is born. Emmanuel, God with us. The light is still present in the world. Go and spread the good news everywhere. Blessings to all this Christmas. Go in peace.